looking into Luke's gospel, the 10th chapter, um, starting in verse 1, it says, After these things the Lord appointed other seventy also and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place whither he himself would come. He said unto them, The harvest is truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves, carry neither purse nor script nor shoes nor salute no man by the way. Uh, and in whatsoever house she enters, first say, Peace be to this house. And if the Son of Peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. If not, it shall return unto you. And in the same house remain eating and drinking such things as they give, for the laborer is worthy of his hire. Go not from house to house. And in whatsoever city you enter and receive you, eat such things as set before you. In the verse 9, And heal the sick that are therein, and say unto them, The kingdom of God has come nigh unto you. I like that. He's saying that healing the sick is a demonstration of the kingdom of God coming nigh to people. Why is it people run around and tell everybody that God's making people sick? Jesus said that healing the sick was a manifestation of the kingdom of God being near to them. Duh. You got to have help getting, the, getting that turned around. And there's lots of it out there, by the way. Okay, people run off to, to theological cemeteries, I mean seminaries, and um, that wasn't a, um, accidental, that was on purpose. You know, you can go somewhere and get all the faith taken out of you. Hello. You know, so Jesus said, go, heal the sick, how do they, and tell them, when you heal the sick, the kingdom of God's come nigh unto you. So healing is part of the kingdom of God. Amen. Making people sick is not part of the kingdom of God. Thank you for your enthusiasm. All right. He says, and if you go into a city and they enter and they don't receive you, go your ways out into the street of the same and say, every, even the very dust of your city which cleaveth us, we do wipe off against you, notwithstanding, be sure of this, the kingdom of God has come nigh unto you. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable in that day for Sodom than for that city. Woe unto Chorazan, woe unto Bethsaida. For if the mighty works that were done in Tyre and Sidon had been done in you, they would have had a great while ago repentance, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. It shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon and the judgment than for you. Be, uh, and thou, Capernaum, which art exalted to heaven, shalt thou be thrust to hell. He that heareth you, heareth me. And he that despises you, despises me. And he that despises me, despises him that sent me. Okay, so Jesus gives them a commission. Go out, go, go heal the sick. I mean, you know, and we, we know that that's part of the kingdom of God. Just preach the gospel. People don't receive it. Let me say something here. We got this crazy idea in the church that if you're just anointed enough, if you've got enough whatever, everybody's going to listen to what you've got to say. I don't know where we got that idea from. Jesus said, they persecuted me, they persecuted you. The servant is not above the master. Where do we get these ideas? You know, <clears throat> some people think they're going to go into the hospital and empty out the hospital beds because you're anointed to heal the sick. Not if they don't receive it. Amen. I said, not if they don't Did Jesus go into it? Did you know Jesus went to Solomon's porch and healed one guy? Well, it was God's will for everybody to be sick. No. There was just a manifestation of the Holy Ghost on that day. You can't go heal folk who don't want to be healed. You can't save people who don't want to be saved. You can't trick them either. We remember one time we had somebody in our church, they went out to some youth detention center, and had everybody come up front and line up and say, everybody wants to reject Jesus Christ. Take a step backwards. And nobody took a step backwards. So they all got saved. The Bible says, that they did not say, he who does not reject me is saved. <laughs> did it? We need to stay with the Bible. Every, 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 duh, I could have stayed with the Bible. No, he that confesses him as Lord shall be saved. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord, no, not sits around a bunch of peer pressure and not take step backwards by yourself. Hello? I mean, not even everybody take a step forward who wants to receive Jesus. If you want to reject him, take a step backwards. Oh, we got everybody saved. No, you didn't. Really? What gospel was that one in? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But Jesus actually told them here, he said that if they reject what you had to say, shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. And tell them, the kingdom of God showed up here. There's a lot of times. You know, we got that story in the Bible. I'm not teaching on healing this morning. I am heading somewhere, but sometimes you've got to say stuff while you're there. Jesus went to a house one day, and all the doctors and Pharisees from every town round about 
were there. And the Bible says this, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Now study it. None of them got healed. You read that whole passage, you'll find out when that statement was made, the group that was in the house, none of them got healed. Finally, they brought some guy on a stretcher. He couldn't get in. They went up on the roof, tore the roof open, dropped it down in the midst of them, and that's the only guy that got healed, and he wasn't there when the Bible said the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Who was it present to heal? The doctors of the law, the Pharisees, and, and large from every around town round about. Yep. power of the Lord was, but none of them got healed. Good. See, oh, if God just wanted me to be well, I'd be well. Not if you don't act on it. Not if you don't ex receive by faith. Not if you don't walk by faith. Not if you don't get the job done on your end. It's all on God's end. No, God's done what God's going to do. The woman with the issue of blood would not have been healed had she not come in the press behind him and touched the hem of his garment. The power was there. As a matter of fact, the, the multitude was thronging thee, and none of them were getting healed, but some woman showed up, touched the hem of his garment, and the Bible says this, and Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue or power had gone out of him. Amen. What caused it to go out? Because there were all kinds of folks touching him. They're like at an Elvis concert. Hello? Elvis, Jesus, Jesus. Just want to touch it because he's a superstar. In their sight. Yeah. <clears throat> Not in his, but in their eyes. They were thronging him. They were, and Jesus said, Jesus turned about and said, who touched me? And the disciples, a spiritual bunch, they were turned about and said, Lord, you see the multitude thronging thee? And you're asking us who touched me? Now, now here's the implication of that statement. They're kind of like, Jesus, you didn't get enough sleep. Everybody's touching you! <laughs> but you see, spiritual people know the difference between touches of curiosity and the touch of faith. God knows the difference between the touch of curiosity and the touch of faith. God knows the difference of coming into a church service in a hope so, maybe so, wish I coulda, woulda. And those who come by faith. See, faith gets the answer. Curiosity does not get the answer. It kills a cat, but it doesn't get the answer. Anyway. Hallelujah. My dad was telling Joe what they said. He said, yeah, I saw a cat in the road. It was dead. I said, what did it look like? No, 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 before it got hit. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> that is funny. If you're listening to this, you'll just have to get it later. Hallelujah. Did y'all like, like that? We just lost the whole service. No, we didn't lose the whole service. Hallelujah. Now, the touch of curiosity doesn't get anything done. Understand this, and in the Bible, as a New Testament born-again believer, there is a God side to things, and there is a man side to things. Hello? There is power available. And we're going to get to this. We're going to go ahead and keep reading here in just a second. But I want you to notice, <clears throat> and I want you to understand, that without the, the, the Godward side, which establishes things, it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's sitting there, it's potential. Remember, Jesus told the people here, they had the dust, of the, the dust of their city shaken off their feet. The kingdom of God came nigh to you. There have been people who sat in church services and missed what God had for them because they got offended. They got, you know, pastor didn't let them do something or somebody didn't get to do what they wanted to do or somebody said something the way they didn't like or they did something. Some, I'll tell you, we need to grow up a little bit in the church and stop getting upset over little stupid stuff. Hello. Because you didn't get your way and throw your little baby fits. Hello. It's time to grow up. My goodness, it's time to grow up. We got, we got a world to win, and you're worried about the fact you didn't get to do such and such on such and such date. My God. Now, you expect that from somebody that got saved last week, but last decade... Hello? Let's grow up. Now say this in unison. We love the pastor. Thank you. All right. Jesus went on to say that those who rejected the message, it would be more tolerable for them than the entire side. Go check them out. Hello? All right. You hear, you hear the hymn, you hear the... You hear 
you hear me, you hear him. Amen? If you despise me, you despise him. And if you despise him, you despise him that sent him. What did, what did John say? If you say, I love God, but hate your brother, you lie. The truth's not in you. Say, oh, my. All right. So, Jesus sends them out. Glory to God. This great commission. That was all free. He didn't have anything. To, you, know, you just take that one and go home and say, ooh, praise God. Verse 17, and the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Now, here are non-born again, old covenant people who have devils subject to them through the name of Jesus. He hadn't even gone to the cross. He hasn't gone to hell and defeated Satan. He hadn't stripped him of his authority. He hadn't ascended up on high with his own blood, sat down at the right hand of the Father as our chief priest of our profession and confession, glory to God. He hadn't done any of that, and they were still subject to him through his name. How much more the church, the born-again, blood-bought church, glory to God, washed in the blood, hallelujah, reconciled to the Father through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and been given the authority to use the name yeah, yeah. as a child of God. Yeah. Have authority over devils, demons, and demonic activity. And Jesus said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Now there's people out there who don't believe Satan is real. Poor Jesus, son of God, second person of the Godhead. He who was and is and is to come. Did not know Satan wasn't real. Yeah, he must, he must have been dropping acid or something. I may, I'm being very facetious here, not being sacrilegious. There are people who say Satan's not real. Well, then why did Jesus see him fall from heaven as lightning? If he's not real, he couldn't have seen him. Hello? I said if he's not real, he could not have seen him. <coughs> He said, I beheld Satan. When did he see that? Well, there was a day way back when, when Lucifer, the morning star, got up one day and said, I will ascend my throne into the heavens. I will be as the most high. And all that. And started beginning talking about, he was, beginning, he was trying to use confession to take over heaven. And the Lord spoke. Now let me say something. Your confession can only go as far as the authority God gives you and allows it to go. You can't take over heaven. Ask Satan. God said, I will cast you as profane out of my midst. What happened? Well, see, heaven operates in, in the realm of the spirit. This operates at the speed of the light. When he said, I'll cast you as profane out of my midst, uh, Satan left heaven at the speed of light, lightning, and ran into the earth. He came out of heaven in a heartbeat. Hello. See, Satan's out there. Satan did the same. Remember, remember Goliath? Now, how do you remember David and Goliath? We always talk about what David said, but do you know that Goliath said about the same thing first? He said, I'm going to feed you to the fowls of the air this day. I mean, he's, he's telling David what he's going to do to him. He said, now see, now here's the difference. Goliath was relying on natural strength. Goliath was, 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 was relying on natural strength. But David said, hey, hey, you come to me with a sword and a spear, but I come to you in the name of the Lord, and I'm going to feed your carcass to the fowls of the air, and I'm going to cut your head off, dude. He said, now bring it on, baby. Yeah, yeah. He had five stones just in case he missed four times. No! Goliath had four brothers. Read your Bible. Goliath had four brothers. There were five giants. And before David died, he ended up killing all of them. Now, here's the problem. Don't ever get so caught up with rejoicing in your present victory, you forget to finish the job. Amen. Because see, it took David the rest of his life to get the other four giants, and when he was old, he had to have help. Because he got old. So he could have gone out there and said, okay, one down, number two down, number three down, number four down, number five down. Okay, it's done. Let's go rejoice. He did not pick up five in case he missed. Hello? One of the giants was a six-finger guy. One of the giants had six fingers. You know. Yeah, my name is Nintoya Matoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. <laughs> He's a six-fingered man. I will kill him. All right. I hate them. No, I don't. I, it grew on me. It took me a long time. I used to say that's the dumbest movie ever put to film. You know, 
They call it a cult movie. Where was I? Oh, the sick. No, 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 no. One, one of the giants had six fingers. Yeah, don't get caught up, so caught up with your, 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 your current victory, you forget to finish the job. Just stay after it. See, here's, that's why this, listen, that's why Paul said, remember this over in, in Philippians, the fourth chapter? Now, we, we've quoted, I, I, I found it in a translation one time, I cannot find it, it's about driven me. If you know where it is, please help me find it. I don't know, I, I wrote it down and, and something got lost or whatever, but in that passage in uh, Philippians 4, where he says, I know how to abound and I know how to um, be abased, one translation said it this way, it said, I know how to abound and not lose my head. I know how to be abased and not lose my poise. See, a lot, we spend a lot of time telling people not to get up tight when you're, when you, you're a base, when you're down and out. Don't, you know, maintain your... St- we forget to tell them that even when you have great victories and there's a lot of joy going on, don't lose your head. Yeah, right. Don't lose your head. Stay steady. Stay steady. Stay steady. Amen? Mm-hmm. Hello? You don't, 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 you know, just stay steady. Don't have to get over, overly excited. Don't have to get over, underly, you know, overly distraught. Just stay steady. And finish the job. Stay on task. Yeah. I believe there have been more defeats following victories because people let down their arm, let down their guard, that's true, that's true. Yeah. Than, than in the actual battle itself. Mm-hmm. People let down their guard right after the victory. They forget, that, you know. I mean, <clears throat> can you imagine how many people were killed in different wars because they thought they had won the battle and there was still some guy out there and he, he was just... He was just, well, I'm going to die anyway, so he, he's going to take at least two or three more with him before he, before, uh, he expired. Yeah. And instead of staying on the balance, staying diligent, stay diligent. Amen? Yeah. Everybody say amen. amen. All right. Jesus says in verse 19, here's where we're going this morning. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. <clears throat> so we have here, Jesus making the statement, I will give you power to tread on the power, uh, surface of the surface over all the power of the enemy. Now, two different words for power here in this, uh, this, this particular translation, I mean, particular passage. We have the first word, Jesus says, I give you power, which we know is exousia, E-X-O-U-S-I-A, exousia. We translate it most of the time, authority. It means authority. It, uh, it means jurisdiction. It means... Um, it, it's got, it actually has a little bit more depth than just authority. Um, it means um, it's force, capacity, competency, freedom, um, jurisdiction, authority. I, and I like to have an authority or jurisdiction. Yeah. Power, you know. See, understand this is not power of strength or might. This is a, a jurisdictional authority or author, you know, authority over something. But there's another, there's another inter, uh, transla- or, or definition for it here in the same, pa- uh, same, same concordance. Mastery. And I thought, man, I like that. Behold, I give you the mastery over all the serpents and scorpions to tread on. Now, the word tread means to trample. You need to stop tiptoeing around devils and start stomping. Come on now. I said you need to stop tiptoeing and start stomping. You need to put a hurt on. Jesus said, in the, and not Jesus, God said to Adam in the Garden of Eden, and then he spoke to the devil, and he said uh, in, in, in Genesis 3.15, he said that the serpent shall bruise your heel, and, you, and he shall bruise your head. Literally, that's, a, that's, a, that's a, uh, an Eastern phraseology that meant he'll break the authority of. You need to start trampling on the devil and breaking his authority. Because when you're tiptoeing, you're letting him in the door. You need to exert your authority. Jesus said, I give you the mastery to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. And the word power there, we know this is dunamis. But dunamis, we, we talk about miracle power, explosive power. Um, but it also means violence. Yeah. See, the, the enemy comes at you to destroy you. The enemy comes at you with everything he's got to crush you and to put you under and to bring you down and to to suck you into the hole of of defeat 
and, and depression and misery. But I want you to know you had the mastery over him. Come on, that's a good shout ground. Jesus said, I gave you the mastery to trample over his violence. The mastery to trample over him and his power or his ability. I've given you the mastery. You are Satan's master in the realm of faith and believing God. Not because of what you've done, but because Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. And you're born of God. And he's given you his name. And he's given you the mastery over the enemy. Come on, couple church. And he says here, and nothing shall by any means hurt. I start looking that up thinking, well, hurt. But it says to be unjust. Now let me say this. See, Chris, again, Christians, we, we we're shallow sometimes in our approach to Bible study. We want to take, we want to take the goo-goos and the, wham, the zoo-zoos and the wham-whams. We want the syrup. We want the chocolate syrup. We want the jar of maraschino cherries. Yeah, I'm with you too. I, now, the only problem in my household is Nathan loves it as much as I do, so I'm, I'm, I'm getting left behind these days. Hide them, okay. Gina says hide them, all right. Yeah, I went back in the refrigerator the other day and found the, the jar of juice. He's been using it for RC colds or whatever and pouring something in there making it, you know, after he got rid of all the cherries out of there. See, we went to live on that. Janie and I uh, went somewhere recently. We went up to Wilkesboro, and we ate, a, we ate a little burger joint on the side of the street after we'd gone to the cheese factory there. And, uh, and after we did that, we went and got a banana split. Oh, yeah, it was good, too. I mean, you know, long, you know, bananas and strawberry and chocolate and vanilla ice cream with pineapple and strawberry and chocolate syrup and uh, wet walnuts and whipped cream and our cherries on top. Uh, hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. And uh, my body said, yes. Um, <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, it was good. Sorry, saying, saying he's training. Sorry. But it was, oh, just piled. I'm just going to keep right on going. But you know what? That was after I had my double cheeseburger with fries. We just picked out. Let me say something. I can't, you just can't go up and eat the banana splits all the time. You can't live on the, on the maraschino cherries on the top. You can't live on the candy. You've got to have sustenance, amen? All right. Now, I was saying that many Christians don't, don't take the time to study right. The word hurt here means unjust. Things done to you unjust in the physical, moral, or spiritual sense. Now, let me say this. If, you, if, if Cab gets up here, walks over and slaps Jerry across the face, and then Jerry picks up a chair and knocks him over the head. Caps can't go around saying, well, the Bible says nothing will hurt me. I, I, nothing's supposed to hurt me. Nothing's supposed to hurt me. You can't say that. That wasn't unjust. You slap him, you get hit with a chair, you got what you deserved. We got Christians doing stuff and things happening. Hello? And they're thinking, they don't understand why the power of God's not working in their life. Well, unjust things are not going to happen to you. That just went over real big. Yeah. See, we got to grow up right. and understand that what we, we need to live a life separated unto God and do according to the Word of God. Amen. And we need, listen, if you're not putting the things into practice and bad stuff happens to you, you're not, you're not doing your part to keep stuff from happening. You've got to cast down thoughts. You've got to cast down imaginations. You've got to speak the word. You've got to bring your, keep your flesh under. Paul said, I, keep my, I buffet my body. I keep it under. Amen? Amen? We, we, keep, our, our, we keep our souls uh, at peace and calm. And with, with peace, the anchor of hope, glory to God. We put on the helmet of salvation. There are things we're to do as believers. <coughs> so, but see, we've been given the mastery. But if you don't exercise your mastery... Over all the power, all the, all the violence, all the, the power, or authority, or not that part of authority, but, but all the power or might of the enemy, he'll beat you. He'll, he'll kick your butt. Yeah, right. Amen. Now, how many heard about this guy, the, the motorcycle gang, drug him out of his car and beat him? Yeah. Now, I mean, can I say something? Yeah. When they came up, if they had come up and started beating them on my window, I would put it in neutral. I would put my floor to the ground on the gas and say, I'm getting ready to put it in gear. You better get out of the way. 
And I would run over them backwards or forwards. Or both ways. I'm telling you. They would not have, that, 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 you know what I'm saying? He had the mastery. All he had to do was put it in neutral and floor it. I'm telling you. And they know that if he pushes that one way or the other, somebody's dead. Are you here? The SUV and the motorcycle, the motorcycle doesn't win. Hello? Body doesn't win. He had, no, I'm, not, I'm not, you know, whatever. He just, uh, who's right or wrong? Well, you just don't drag people out of the car and beat them. You know, after trying to intimidate them with your bike. You know? Yeah, just run right at the motorcycle. Pull a, pull a Smokey and the Bandit. Go get your tractor trailer and run them all over. Lord, help me get out of this. Anyway, <clears throat> when we have the mastery of a situation and we don't exercise what we have as our mastery, you're going to lose. Are you here? I believe this with all my heart. You arm all your school teachers, you won't have another school place violence issue. Take all your teachers to the firing range, teach them how to shoot a weapon, and let Yo-Yo show up in the, class, show up in the building, and the first time he pulls a trigger, nine teachers get out in the hall and go, boom, 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 it'll be over. No, we're going to take all the guns away. No, 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 you're going to take them away from the people who, who can stop stuff. You're not going to take them away. Listen, do you remember when the Shady Hook thing happened? Over, over in Asia, some guy went in the classroom and stabbed 26 kids with a knife about the same day. Hello? If you, if you give people the mastery of a situation and they don't use it, it's not going to help. I mean, our, we got, a lot of our police forces are so, are, you know, it won't just forget them. Our, our military soldiers are so restricted in the rules of engagement. They have to be fired upon or shot or killed before they can fire back. Well, it's kind of hard to fire back when you're dead. You've given them the tool of mastery. We've got the best weapons. We've got the best training. We've got the best whatever in the world. And then we tell them, you can't use it until the lawyer says it's okay. Just go back to the old days. Kick butt, ask questions later. And then who messed with it? Nobody messed with us. Because we, we, yeah, Jack Bauer. Hey, Jack's coming back. Hallelujah. All right. Are y'all here? Beep, beep, beep. All right. May 2014, Jack is back. In London, but not, but anyway, that's good enough, close enough for me. They speak English. No, they don't. They speak Brit. But if you, if, if you don't understand that Jesus gave you the mastery and then use it, you're going to get whipped. Are you here? Jesus said, I have given you the authority, the exosia, the mastery to trample on serpents and scorpions. You need to start trampling. You need to get up in your bedroom and do some devil trampling. Now, I don't mean dancing in the Holy Ghost because you're happy. I mean dancing on devil's heads and saying, I've had enough of you. It's time for you to pack your bags and get out of my house because Jesus told me I have the mastery. I have the authority to trample on you. So here I am trampling in Jesus' name. I will not be bound by your authority. I will not be bound by your power. I will not be bound by your ability. I'm under the Most High God, and He's given me mastery over you. Yeah. No more will you rule and reign in my life. No more will you rule and reign in my thought life. No more will you rule and reign in my house. I have the mastery. Glory to God. Well, how do you have the master, preacher? Three simple words. In Jesus' name, I command you. Hallelujah. Demons are helpless at the sound of that name. They still remember Jesus put them to shame. All hell just trembles, for they must obey. And heaven stands at attention when I mention that name. Hallelujah. There is a name above every name. 
Oh, put in the mouth of the believer, glory be to God, hallelujah, that turns him into an unstoppable force, hallelujah. You and Jesus win all the time, glory to God, because you're yoked together with him. His name has authority and power. He's granted unto you the mastery of your circumstance and situation. And when you speak that name and demand demons, hallelujah, to stop what they're doing, you're doing a trampling dance on their head and saying no more. I draw the line in the sand. Your day is over. Your day is done doing this best to me. And if you show up again, I'll slap you again. Amen. Amen. Instead of lying around going, glad despair and agony on me. This is my show. <laughs> I mess with Nathan. He hauls some. Stop singing about the place you're in and start taking your mastery. Stop letting the devil run over you and become the master of your circumstance. <clears throat> Stop allowing him to pull you down and cut the, cut the fetters of his chains on your life and say, no more. No more. God spoke in, uh, through Paul to the church, to, to his young, young pastor Timothy. Over in 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7, he said, he said, God has not given us a spirit of fear. Stop being afraid. Stop being afraid of failure. Stop being afraid of being alone. Stop being afraid that you're not going to make it. Stop being afraid that you can't get the job done. He said that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but one of power. Then that word is dunamis. And love and a sound mind. We had that little course. Remember that? God has not given us the spirit of fear. God has not given us the spirit of fear. We need to sing stuff. You need to sing stuff around your house. You need to stop singing, you know, whatever. Whatever it is, you know. I'm going to play my country songs backwards. You get your wife back, the dog back, the two kids back, I mean, your house back, your car back, your truck back, all this kind of, you know. You can't play life backwards. You got to play life forward. Are you here? And you can't let the devil take all the junk of the past and all the failures or all the hurts or all the loss of the past and bring it into your life and tell you that's how you're going to live your life and put you in fear of your future when he said, I've not given you the spirit of fear. Remember what Jesus said? I gave you the mastery to trample on those devils. I've given you the mastery to tell the devil no more. I've given you the mastery to win. So much so that the Apostle Paul wrote to the church at Corinth in the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians, the 57th verse, he said, Now thanks be unto God, which always causes me to triumph through Jesus Christ my Lord. He had the mastery. He mastered his circumstances. He mastered the situations. One day he wasn't, listen, one day he wasn't there. We, gotta, we grow to that point of understanding full mastery. One day he got to whining and complaining. As a matter of fact, three times he whined and complained. Now people use it as a, as a doctrinal position that God make, does bad stuff to you. It was Paul whining. Where he said, you know, he said three times, I, there was given unto me for the abundance of the revelations, there was given unto me a, 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 a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, sent to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. And I said, we always think God gave it to him to keep him humble. Let's take this at a different angle. Satan sent the messenger to try to keep him from walking in the revelation. Whole different perspective. The messenger, the Bible, he said it was the messenger of Satan. Duh. I believe Angelos. Maybe may, may Angel. May, I think it may in Greek may be Angel. The angel of Satan was sent. Well, God didn't send him. 
lest I be exalted above measure. See, we always kind of say, oh, see, God's trying to keep him humble. How about the devil was trying to keep him from walking in the revelation of who he was in Christ and what he had? Because it says here, lest I be exalted by the abundance of the revelation that was given to me, a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan. It did not say God gave it to him. We do know that it was the messenger of Satan. It came from the devil. And, and, and Paul got the wine. He said, three times I asked the Lord to get this off of me. And he just answered back. Here's, here's how we read the next verse. Well, Paul, I really need for you to put up with this because I'm going to teach you something. He said, he, but the Lord answered and said, my grace is sufficient. He said, my grace is sufficient for, the, for my strength is made perfect. In, whoa, whoa, whoa. He didn't say, but you know what he said? If God's strength is made perfect in his weakness, that doesn't mean put up with it and be defeated by it. If the strength of God is going to show up on the scene, if the strength of God is going to be made manifest in the midst of that circumstance, what happens when the strength of God comes in contact with the devil's mess? The devil's a mess. Hello? Are you here? When the strength of God is made, Paul says, I'll gladly rejoice, glory in my infirmities or weaknesses, that the power of Christ. Now listen, we always read that as the power to put up with. How about the power to overcome? Because see, I don't have a Bible. I don't, when I read the New Testament, I don't see God gracing me to put up with. Every time I turn around, I keep seeing the word victory. He always causes me to triumph. That's a victory term. Yeah. Hallelujah. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even my faith. Glory to God. Now I see that there's neither life nor death nor power nor things present nor things to come that can separate me from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Are you here? Yeah. I keep seeing winner. I keep seeing overcomer. I, keep, I don't ever see put up with. Hello? Are you here? I said, are you here? Glory be to God forever. God, he causes us. We're the church. How many are part of the church? I said, how many are part of the church? Glory to God. Hallelujah. If you're part of the church, then you're part of the victory team. If you're part of the church, you're full of, listen, God is giving you the measure of faith. And he's granted unto you the mastery over the enemy, praise God. God has given you the ability to win. Stop losing then. Stop putting up with the devil. Stop putting up with junk. I'm preaching better than you're saying amen. I just want you to know that. If you don't start saying amen, I'm going to bring you all out of the church. I'm going to preach to the church to say amen to myself. And I'm just pouring it out there and you're just kind of going, yeah, that's right. Preach it, Pastor. Come on now. It's your life I'm talking about. It's about you being the master of your circumstance. You winning. You overcoming. You defeating the devil through the mastery he's granted unto you. Glory to God. Trampling the devil under your foot and saying no more. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. It don't do you any good for me to trample. It doesn't do any good for Larry to trample. There's Larry some good. <clears throat> does me good when I trample. But you're going to have to trample. Hallelujah. I said, you're going to have to trample. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Are you here? You're going home. How many are still here? How many of they got up and left? Not yet. Don't leave yet. Anytime. Hallelujah. You are to have the mastery to trample under your foot all the ability and all the power and all the, the uh, works of the enemy in your life, you can win and you can win in every circumstance. Can you say amen? I said, can you say amen? 
Hallelujah. Listen, you stop letting fear get into your thinking. You stop letting the devil run roughside over you. You stop letting the devil tell you that you're not going to make it. You stop letting the devil tell you that, you know, because you did this and you did that and this happened and all that happened, you're not going to get to where you want to go in life. I want you to know God has got a path for you to get where you're supposed to go in life. God's got a revenue for you to get where you're supposed to go in life. Glory to God. I want you to know it's not too late to get there either. Praise God. Can you say amen? It's not too late. Oh, I'm so tired. I'm so weary. Yes, we can all get weary and we can all get tired. But I'll tell you what, you will reap in this new season if you faint not. Stop fainting and get up and run. Get up and start taking the mastery over your circumstance. Start taking the mastery over the devil. Glory to God. Those serpents and those serpents and scorpions that come to rob you of your joy, that come to rob you of your faith, that come to rob you of your dream. Tell them no more. Today is my day. Glory to God. I'm going to rise up with the greater one on the inside. And I'm going to say, I'm your master. I'm your master circumstance. I'm your master devil. I'm your master tormenting spirit. And I put you underfoot and I trample on you and I say enough is enough. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Enough is enough. Glory to God. I've had it. I'm putting on my master suit. Hallelujah. I'm going to go borrow Fred's shoes a stair and start tapping on your head. Not forget his. Go get Gene Kelly's. He was the power dancer. Go back and look at your old movies. Fred was very, had a lot of class. Gene Kelly was the power tapper. <coughs> it's time to do some power tapping on the devil's head. You wake up in the morning, the devil's saying, this is going to be a bad day. It's time to get up and, and start trampling. It is, yeah. Don't stop. You need to trample right on into the shower and out of the shower and down to your workplace. Hallelujah. And if you get caught by the cops going down the road too fast because you were trampling on your, on your flip-flop, say, I'm sorry. Go ahead and write me up. I was just taking care of some spiritual business. I was putting my de the devil underfoot. I was telling him no more today. It's over with in my life. Can you say amen? amen? I said, can you say amen? Well, shout somebody. I said, shout somebody. Those God, God didn't give you that spirit of fear. It came from the devil. But I gave you one of power, love, and a sign. He gave you miracle working power. He gave you a spirit of love. He gave you a spirit of soundness of mind. You stop being tormented by the devil. He'll plague you in your mind. You just have no master. I am your master. I am your master. You don't know the power of the right side. I thought that was pretty good. Some of y'all thought, Bill's going, did he really do that? Yeah, I did it. And I will do it again. And he'll do it again. I mean, what's that? When you get on the right side of things, Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and a heavy burden, and I will give you rest. What did he say? For my yoke is easy. Now, what's he saying? We get hooked up with him. When you are hooked up with the master, you are master of the circumstances coming against you. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, debt has to bow its knee. It's time we stop whining about what the administration has done and why they're so bad and so tough. I'm preaching to me. I'm not happy about all the stuff that's happened. I got a letter the other day. That Jesse's insurance is going from $57 a month to $196 a month under the Affordable Health Care Act. Affordable. Her insurance is going at $140 a month. That's $1,400 and something, or $1,600 a year. 
<coughs> more. I'm not happy about $3 plus gasoline for the longest period in the history of our country. I'm not happy that groceries, you know, you walk in, you buy $30 of groceries, you could live for a week. You get eat a meal. But you know what? We've got to start looking at this and saying, debt and financial struggle does not have the mastery over me. I'm a tither, and I'm a giver. And my God said he shall supply my need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus, even when it don't look like it, even when it doesn't look like it. I'm preaching to me too now, church. Even when it doesn't look like we got enough, even when it doesn't look like you any way you're going to get enough, it doesn't look like there's any way to get any more money. Hallelujah. Look your eyes and turn them on to Jesus. Glory to God. And be the master of that circumstance and trample underfoot debt and say, debt, that's it. We draw the line here. As a church, we say debt, we draw the line here. Hallelujah. We've got to start talking faith and mastery <coughs> as individuals and as a corporate body. Hello. I've faced some tough times financially. The past couple of years have been rough. Church and personal. And the rough probably don't even describe it. But we've got to join up and we've got to say no more. We've got to say no more. If somebody gets offended and leaves and goes somewhere and takes their money, then God just sends somebody else in with more. More comes in. We won't, be we won't be beholden to their money to do what they want done. We're going to follow God and preach the word and be like God wants us to be. Amen. So God's just going to send more folk with more money. Amen. Lots of money. Because it's not them, it's him. Can you say amen? But I speak over your life in the name of Jesus. And I decree. Stand up and lift your hands to heaven. Hallelujah. I speak over you by the authority. Oh, of the, of, the, of, the, of the authority of the Spirit of the living God. I speak over you right now, mastery over that circumstance. I speak that debt is broken. The stranglehold of financial bondage is bro broken over your life now in Jesus' name. I decree that finances begin to flow as an as a, as a undammed river flow through your life supernaturally now in the name of Jesus. Everything the enemy's been holding back, we trample underfoot. Come on, trample. Do some trampling right now. Hallelujah. We trample debt. We trample those spirits and say, no more will you hold us out of the land of promise. No more will you hold us out of the land of blessing. No more will you hold us out of the things God has for us. But we're going in as a mighty army. Say it together. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Give him a shout. Hallelujah. Glory to God. My, 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 my. I didn't preach myself happy. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> I just sense a new preaching anointing, a refreshing of the preaching anointing. Glory. Hallelujah. I do too. Oh yeah. I'd just rather I'd rather preach than eat. I, teaching I do because the Lord tells me I have to. And I and I yield to that. I love to preach. And I just sense the refreshing of the preaching anointing. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, don't miss. God's going God, God's by the authority of the anointing and the word of God breaking stuff out of people's lives. Hallelujah. Don't you miss it? Don't you miss it? I said, don't you miss it? And don't let other folks miss it too because they got, got some, something in their crawl. Right. Hallelujah. Go, to, go slap and tell them to grow up and get over here. Yeah, Amen. You say, Pastor told me to slap you, tell you, drag you over here. All right. <laughs> yeah, the bigger you take two people with you. Just <laughs> get it done. Get her done. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Jabba Pakasika, ha ha ha, Rakuskutade. 
ለብሮን ሱንግሌት ከማታ ያለው ተስከለ ያታከው ትስኪስ ከተደ ላብሩሱ ጽፈር ለለቤስ ክሌ ደቡን ወራባ ሐረለ ቤት ቤ መለለቤስ ኮዳራ ባደለኝ የኔ ኮጅ ኩጆሬ ረባ ደባ 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 so with these words and 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 thought and in your minds and your hearts this morning will you rise up or will you stay laying on the ground will you take up that which the lord has spoken this morning and establish your mastery of life or will you continue to waller in self pity Here the Lord says unto you I've given unto you the tools I've given unto you the answer and here I give you the choice choose mastery or defeat choice is yours but mastery leads to the path of joy and victory and a fulfilled life defeat leads to despair and loss and agony This is your day. You choose. You choose which way will you go? What position will you take? What stand will be yours? Ask the Lord. But know and understand that if you'll choose mastery, I'm there with you. I'll see you through. I'll see you victoriously through. I'll sustain you with my grace. Undergird you and strengthen you with my grace. And you'll see the hand of the lord upon your life pulling you into victory after victory after victory as you walk in your mastery and trample underfoot all the all the serpents and scorpions and and, and works of the enemy in your life says the lord hallelujah hallelujah oh my 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 i said oh my god is good Amen. how often is god good he's good all the time isn't he i said he's good all the time isn't he hallelujah Will you come just to play? Okay, you don't have something? Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Hallelujah. You, Amen. Amen. We're not going under, we're going over. Right, right, right. We're not defeated, we're the head. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. We're not going to give in to the spirit of this age. We're masters over it. Racist spirits, mm-hmm. poverty spirits, angry devils. I'm not going to be angry. Amen. Hallelujah. Now let's say, on the natural side, I'm going to vote in politics in a way that will represent my belief in what God wants. I don't vote for, I don't vote, I don't vote for pro-abortion. I don't vote pro-homosexual. I don't vote anything that's contrary to the things of God. I don't care who they are. I don't care what party they are. I don't care if Barney and Baby Bob are running. Hello? the purple dinosaur and the yellow whatever baby bop is. Does anybody know what baby bop is? A, tr- a tricep. Oh, he's, he's a dinosaur of some kind. He's a, he's a yellow dinosaur. Cap nose. Because I love you. Yeah, okay. Y'all here? But I'm not going to be angry. I'm going to be full of faith in the Holy Ghost. We're going to speak. Yeah. And if God, has to, if God has to send harvest in the midst of famine, then God, God just sends harvest in the midst of famine. Amen. Amen. We flourish in the land of the living. Thank you, God. Thank you, I said we flourish in the land of the living because we're the church. We're blood bought. We're blood bought. We're blood washed. We're the church of the living God. How many, how, how many are pumped this morning? Yeah, feel it. Now, let me say this. You got a message that'll pump you up. Yeah. You got to inspire. See, preaching will inspire. Mm-hmm. Now, you go do what I preached right, right. and live in your mastery over the enemy and watch your circumstances change and you rise to the top. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's time to do some rising and stop sitting curled up in a ball in the corner of the room wishing it could get better. It's time to go kick some demon back in and make it better. Are you here? It's time to rip off the chains. It's time to trample underfoot and it's time to run your race and see it through to the end. Amen?
Glory to God. Now, I want you to find two people and look at them and say, you are the master of those circumstances in your life. Thank you.